with production and filming on Star Trek Picard Season 2 underway, as well as a great little teaser trailer recently released, YouTubers such as myself have been looking for any nugget of information surrounding the series for their videos. But for me, instead of going forward, I want to take a moment and look back to see if there's anything in the USS Stargazer's beta canon past that could become canon, and give us a vital clue as to the future of Star Trek. And so today, we'll do just that. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using beta canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the history of the USS Stargazer. Because this is a beta canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The USS Stargazer was a Constellation-class starship. A departure from the normal Starfleet nacelle configuration, the Constellation class would be defined by its rather prominent four nacelle design. Construction on the USS Stargazer began in early 2276. The early history of the USS Stargazer was quite unremarkable at best. Relegated to a simpler mission profile at the time to allow for testing of the class's new systems, the Stargazer would not make a name for itself until the early 24th century. By 2329, the USS Stargazer was under the command of Captain Anton Manning. Though the Constellation class had performed well throughout the Federation, the class was still generally performing duties within the core of the organization. This meant that starships of the class, such as the USS Stargazer, were given lighter duty tasks to perform, such as scientific analysis and diplomatic duties. In 2329, the Stargazer would be part of a special envoy sent to the planet Vulcan to represent the Federation during Ambassador Spock's betrothal to Commander Savick. Both prominent officers in Starfleet history, the Federation wanted to put its good foot forward and wish the couple many happy returns. On this mission would be the Stargazer's new Flight Control Officer, Lieutenant Junior Grade Jean-Luc Picard. By 2333, command of the Stargazer had been given to Captain Dathan Ruhalter, and Jean-Luc Picard would be promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Commander and given the second officer's position on the starship. Ordered to investigate the possible threat of a new yacht attack beyond the Great Barrier, the Stargazer would become embroiled in a set of events that would see Jean-Luc Picard become captain of the Stargazer. Starfleet technology had greatly improved since James T. Kirk and the original Constitution-class USS Enterprise had attempted to cross the barrier, creating an almost godlike superhuman. And with shield modifications, after years of extensive study of the barrier, Starfleet felt that the USS Stargazer could freely cross the phenomena without any danger. After crossing the barrier, the USS Stargazer was attacked and crippled by the new Yod, which left Captain Ruhalter dead and First Officer Commander Stephen Leach in a coma. Picard then assumed command, outwitted the new Yod, and got the Stargazer safely to Magnia Colony. While undergoing repairs at the colony, the Stargazer's crew, uncomfortable with such an inexperienced commander, mutinied. Picard, however, managed to quell the mutiny placing the handful of officers in the starship's brig. With the mutiny resolved, Picard had the Stargazer refitted with enhanced weaponry and defended the Magnians from New Yod attack while simultaneously destroying one of the New Yod's major weapons depots before returning to Federation space. Following the successful completion of the mission, Starfleet Command promoted Captain Picard to the rank of Captain and placed him in permanent command of the Stargazer. In 2339, the Stargazer came under attack by an 11 million year old automated defense system while attempting to assist a planetary population 
in stopping their star from becoming a red giant. Instead, the attempt caused an immense solar eruption, and the entire civilization was forced to abandon the star system. To assist with the evacuation, Captain Picard ordered the Stargazer into a gap in the defense system's coverage, allowing the Stargazer's science officer to deactivate the weapon, thereby making it safe for the planetary population to leave the system. In 2341, the USS Stargazer accidentally jumped forward in time 10 days due to a tiny quantum singularity that was responsible for the orbital irregularity in a binary star system. When the Stargazer attempted to warp away from the system, the singularity instead caused the starship to leap forward in time, yet causing the Stargazer's warp nacelles to stay in temporal sync with their previous time frame essentially causing the starship to become unstuck in time and unable to move. First Officer Jack Crusher deduced that emitting a series of graviton pulses from 10 light days away would resynchronize the engines with the rest of the ship, allowing the Stargazer to escape. The plan worked and the Stargazer returned to Earth under low power for repairs. Back at Earth, Starfleet Command would take the opportunity to give the Stargazer an extensive overhaul and refit. In 2345, the USS Stargazer would come under attack while on a survey mission of an ice giant. After returning fire, the Stargazer was contacted briefly by aquatic beings that lived in the water ammonia mantle of the planet. Dubbed Polyphemians by Captain Picard, they requested no further contact with anyone from the Federation, as previous interactions with Class M lifeforms had been harmful to both parties. Though saddened, Captain Picard respected the planet's request, placing the star system on the Federation's off-limits world listing. In 2348, the Stargazer was involved in a minor skirmish with the Akamarian Gatherers. Not fooled by the ambush the Gatherers had laid, Captain Picard lured them towards the son of the star system, a red dwarf, just as the star gave off an X-ray flare. The Gatherers then surrendered to the Stargazer, and the conflict was resolved peacefully, with the Stargazer's medical staff treating the Akamarians for radiation exposure. In 2353, sadly, Jack Crusher, first officer of the starship Stargazer, would be lost in an unfortunate accident. In 2355, the Stargazer was ordered to Maxia Zeta for a star system survey mission. Unknown at the time, the star system was also being surveyed by a Ferengi scout starship, the 75th Rule, commanded by Flax, son of Damon Bach. Upon entering the Maxia Zeta star system, Damon Flax launched an unprovoked attack on the Stargazer. During the course of the battle, the Stargazer was severely damaged. Captain Picard ordered his helmsman to obtain a bearing on the attacking vessel, and upon receiving that bearing, ordered his starship to jump to high warp for several seconds. Then he ordered the ship to come to a full stop near the Ferengi vessel. As a result, the Stargazer briefly appeared to be in two places at once, and the Ferengi ship made the mistake of firing on the wrong coordinates, while the USS Stargazer opened fire with a fierce barrage of phaser and photon torpedoes, destroying the Ferengi vessel. Due to the extensive damage done to the starship, Captain Picard decided to abandon the Stargazer, which was on fire and losing power quickly. The survivors of the Stargazer drifted in shuttlecraft for weeks before finally being picked up by a search and rescue starship. Upon his return to the Federation, Captain Picard was court-martialed for the loss of the Stargazer, which was standard procedure for the loss of any vessel at the time. Ultimately, however, Captain Jean-Luc Picard would be acquitted of any wrongdoing, and the desperate maneuver he had used during the battle would come to be known as the Picard Maneuver. Because the Ferengi had refused all communications during the battle, Starfleet had no idea who had attacked the Stargazer. Starfleet intelligence initially suspected it was a Cardassian ship, 
but eventually, with no definitive proof, the entire matter would be dropped. Shortly after the battle, a Ferengi starship commanded by Damon Bach was sent to find the Ferengi scout ship. Once there, however, there was no sign of his son's vessel, finding instead the badly damaged USS Stargazer in a decaying orbit of the fifth planet. Damon Bach took control of the Stargazer, and reviewing the ship's logs was able to determine that his son's ship had been destroyed by the Stargazer and its captain Jean-Luc Picard. Taking the Stargazer to a nearby Ferengi salvage yard, Bach would spend the next nine years repairing the ship and planning his revenge on Captain Picard. Using scavenged parts and components purchased from corrupt Federation dealers, Damon Bach would be successful in making the starship fully operational once again. And in 2364, Bach asked for a meeting with Captain Jean-Luc Picard and the USS Enterprise D, which Picard now commanded. After the initial meeting, Bach formally returned the Stargazer to Federation control, and the mystery about who had originally attacked the Stargazer was finally unraveled. Planting an illegal mind-altering device in Picard's quarters on the Stargazer, Picard unknowingly took the device back to the Enterprise, a device which permitted Bach to alter Picard's mind to the point where Picard began reliving his experiences on the Stargazer just prior to the battle. In his confused state, Bach was able to manipulate Picard into beaming aboard the Stargazer and prepare to attack the Enterprise, believing it to be the Ferengi scout ship. Thankfully, Lieutenant Commander Data was able to counter the Picard maneuver, allowing the Enterprise to grab the Stargazer in its tractor beams and eventually rescue Captain Picard. Bach was arrested by the Ferengi authorities and the USS Stargazer would be towed to a nearby starbase and eventually back to Earth, where it was restored back to its original configuration at the time Jean-Luc Picard had first taken command of the ship. And then it was placed in the Starfleet Museum, where it's still housed today. The USS Stargazer and its missions would themselves become legends, inspiring Starfleet officers to boldly head into the unknown recesses of space. Launching the career of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, the USS Stargazer would allow the good captain to showcase his talents and unconventional thinking. This in itself would lead Captain Picard to become captain of the USS Enterprise-D, and one of the most famous captains in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Beta Canon history of the USS Stargazer? What events from this tale are you hoping gets canonized in Star Trek Picard? Well, leave your comments in the section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel fend off a Ferengi attack? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.